alive. We are back with our live stream for this week. Today is, well, it's the last Wednesday in April. That's why I know. I think it's the 29th, but that doesn't really matter. I'm so glad that you guys are with us as we continue to find creative ways to have these gatherings, even when we can't gather together. So you are a part of that. I'm so thankful for you uh, and joining us today. And maybe you're watching this a little bit later. Maybe you're watching it later on Facebook or on YouTube. Thank you for finding this video and joining us today. It's going to be a great service, a lot of different video contribution that's gonna make it a really fun time. And in just a minute, we have a senior guest in here today uh, that we are gonna be interviewing. He's gonna be helping us out with the game today. I'm excited for you to get to meet and watch. So. Thank you guys for being here. A couple things, as always, to make sure that you uh, are, are being a part of our service today. Number one, share this. If you're on Facebook right now, even if you're using your parents' account, you can go ahead and share it. Share it to their feed. Let people know that we're alive. This is huge for us because it not only just tells people about alive and our church, but also lets people know about the gospel because that's what we're really about, telling people about the love of Jesus. And that's what we're about here at Alive. If you've never been here to Alive before, Alive is the student ministry of Orlando Baptist Church here in Orlando, Florida. And we are all about celebrating the fact that we used to be dead, but now are alive in Jesus. And that is why we're here, and that is what we're excited about. And I'm Pastor Schmidt. Uh, I'm the youth pastor here, and I'm so excited to get to interact with you guys, have these times with, with you guys. And in just a minute, we're actually going to have a game time that is a live game time. And the way that you participate is that you uh, can sign up to be a part of our text. Uh, these are texts that we send out uh, sometimes, usually once a day, to let you know about our morning, morning Bible studies that we're doing right now. In a normal week, it'd probably just be a few times a week. And this is how we let you know about what's going on here at Alive. So if you don't already, uh, if you're not already signed up to get that text, I want to encourage you to do that now. Something's going to come up on the screen that's going to let you know about that. Um, and you can just follow those quick directions and sign up because in just a few minutes, this is the way that you can participate in the game. And again, if you haven't been here before, the way we do things uh, each week is we're going to have six game winners. And at the end of service, we will roll a dice and there will be one remaining game winner that is chosen from the dice. And we will send you a pizza tonight for dinner. As long as you don't have, already have dinner plans, we'll send a pizza to your house. We'll call it in and you'll have it by dinner time. So, hey, that's a sweet deal just for participating in our game today. You got dinner covered for you and probably your family. So, hey, I'm so thankful you're here. Uh, and we have actually a little recap. If you weren't with us this past Friday, we had our first Zoom game night. That is a virtual game night, hanging out together from all the different living rooms from all over. And thank you for joining us. Also, a lot of you guys were able to win some of the games we're playing. We sent out digital gift cards. Zoe, I'm sorry I haven't sent yours out yet. I'll get you that one soon. Um, but go ahead and check out the recap from our really fun night. have a minute where people like all turn off their mute because I just feel like I'm talking to my computer for a second. Can I just like hear everybody? Oh my god! Yeah. Wow. Uh, wow. Yeah. Oh my no gosh. one drew first. Smart, 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 smart. Smart, smart, smart. Well, hey, uh, thank you guys so much for being a part of that. And make sure that you're on the lookout for the next time we do that, probably real soon. Uh, make sure you join us. We're going to have some more fun, more games, and we want you there. Uh, definitely a huge shout out to Micah Cauley uh, under the name Digital Hyrax. He's been making some great tracks. We used it in our countdown at the beginning of service and also the backing track for that video. You might even catch one of his songs later in a video later in the service. So thank you for making awesome music that we can use in our service. 
Well, hey, I know that you guys know that we've been doing a segment each week called Alive Shreds, and we've had some of our amazing students submit uh, amazing videos of them just shredding their guitar. Jack and Jacob DaCosta have, have both submitted videos. Tommy, hopefully soon we're gonna get one from you. But I actually extended out to an old Alive uh, member, someone who used to be a student as part of our ministry, is now in college, and I asked him to do a video. So why don't you go ahead and check that out now. Hello Alive, I'm Jonathan Monday, and today I'm going to be doing some jazz improvisation for you on the tune Sunny in A minor. And I'm doing it blindfolded so when I inevitably play all the bad sounding notes, I'll have an excuse. I swear it's not my mediocre guitar playing. All right, we're back. Monday, thank you so much for doing that. Uh, impressive with the blindfold, right? Um, and I was I was telling Peyton how long your hair was, and she's like, I don't believe it. But yeah, pretty long, right? I think maybe yeah. longer than yours. I don't know. It's I don't know. It's it's pretty nice. So this is Peyton Mosler. Uh, hi. hi everyone. Uh, high five, maybe just from over yeah. there. Okay, cool. Um, so Peyton is going to be here. We're going to do a little sit down interview in just a minute. But she has promised told me that she's gonna help me with a new game that we're gonna be playing today. So again, go ahead right now, wherever you're at, and get out your phone, um, if you're not already watching on your phone, and get out your uh, the, the text from the last remind text that you have, and get ready to submit your response. So what we're gonna do today is, um, Peyton, I know that you've been doing some like chalk art kind of stuff, we'll talk about that a little bit later, I guess. Yeah. So um, I asked Peyton if she would help me with a more artistic game today. She would help me do a little Pictionary quarantine style. So it'll be digital, and I know there's a little bit of a delay, but we're gonna make it work. So the way it's gonna work is Peyton is, uh, uh, I'm gonna give Peyton a, uh, something to draw, and she's gonna draw it, and you're gonna try to guess what it is. It's Pictionary, it's really simple. Now here's the thing, you get one guess. Everybody say one guess. One guess, all right. There it is, I'm like, Connor, come on. Uh, all right, you get one guess, and so you better make it good, and it needs to be exact. Like, it can't just be kind of, sort of, it needs to be the right phrasing, because there's gonna be a lot of people submitting answers. Um, so that's how you win. The first person to submit the correct phrasing for, um, for the drawing is gonna get their name on our board of game winners. We're gonna do six rounds of this. So. Really simple, right? It should be really easy. So here is our theme for our game of Pictionary today. It is things you do during quarantine. How's quarantine been for you, Peyton? Pretty good. Not, not too bad, can't complain, just hanging out at home, right? Yeah. Um, all right, so this might be something you do, something that everyone's been doing, something that your friend's been doing, but these are things that people have been known to do during quarantine. So start thinking about what that might be, think about how we might word that, and she's just gonna draw. So let's, you wanna get started? Yeah. All right, here's the first one. Um, and I'm just gonna say go and she's gonna start. So again, uh, go ahead and start. Here is the first one. Text in right now what you think. This is something you do during quarantine. Something you do during quarantine. Do, 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 do. Something you do during quarantine. What do you guys think? Something you do 
during quarantine. All right, the first one I got was from Gabe GP Pizarro, who was here last week. It was sleep. Thank you, Gabe. Okay, that was the easy one. We started off pretty simple, right? So that was sleep. All right, so Gabe, got it. That wasn't too bad at all. You guys were quick. All right, sleep. Thank you, Monday, for just shooting me a text. All right, uh, you guys ready for round two? The first one, again, was sleep. Gabe got it. Gabe, you're, you're good. You can keep guessing, but uh, just a one-time winner today. So again, make sure you get the correct phrasing. It's going to get a little harder, so that was the easy one to show you how to do it. All right, are you ready for the next one? Let, let's do it. Okay. Something you do during quarantine. Something. I like, uh, like Mo said, take a nap. That probably is uh, accurate. Sarah said sleeping in, which is also good. We just went simple with that one. So what is this one going to be? Something you do during, something you do during quarantine. Waiting to see who's my first text. Who's my first text gonna be? I just got one that just says Jack is awesome. Uh, that's not gonna work for me. Nope, sorry. Um, thank you, Don Jacobson, though. Shout out to your boy, Jack. Uh oh, here it is. The first one that came through is from Micah Colley. Micah, I just gave you a shout out and you got the right one. It is social, social distancing, right? That's it, you nailed it. Okay, so Micah is on the board. Micah's been trying to get a pizza each week and has not been successful. Gabe was our first week winner, so I know he's excited for another shot. I don't know if he's gonna try to convince me to get him Chipotle if he wins instead of pizza, but I can be bought, right? I might be able to do that for you. All right, uh, let's see what's next. Here we go. Uh, let's go ahead and do the next one. This is the third, number three. This is something you do during quarantine. Something you do during quarantine. What do you guys think? Something you do during quarantine. She's drawing, it's something? It's a lollipop? What is that? I have no idea. Something's happening, something's happening. Leah, that was very specific on the last one. Stay six feet apart. I just keep getting one that, okay, we have we have one that, that's not right. No, getting close, that is a good one. Okay, no, I'm getting a lot of guesses. These aren't right yet, so this one's a little bit different. Okay, we're getting painting, watch TV. No, I'm getting watch TV, it's not watching TV. She's still drawing, still drawing. Looking for a very particular phrase. Yeah, keep keep drawing. What do you, what do you got? Whatever, whatever you think you can help us with. A lot of submissions haven't gotten it right yet. So we said painting. No, that's not gonna not gonna fly. Playing video games. I know that's what Connor's been doing, but no, that's not it either. Something else you do during quarantine. Close. Somebody said Zoom calls. That's close. Watching movies, video conferencing, getting a lot of things. Getting close. Uh, I will help you out. This is something you probably don't enjoy doing right now. Something you don't actually want to do during quarantine. This is quarantine. What do you do during quarantine? Somebody's going to get it. Online school. You got it. All right, that was Mo coming in with the online school. Good job, Mo. I knew you were going to get one of these. Mo has also been trying to get a pizza each week. I know you're excited. You don't have to share it with your sisters. You don't have to. You can just keep it all for yourself. Uh, Carly said, a live Bible study at 10. Leah came in online school. You had the right answer just a little late. It's all right. Okay, let's go to the next one. Um, this one should be fun. All right, number four. Okay. Number four. All right, here we go. The next one, something you do. Maybe you've seen your friend do. Maybe they posted a video of them doing this during quarantine. Let's see what it is. Bain, your ability to draw stick figures is just beyond my ability to ever do that. All right, so we got a person. Um, long, beautiful hair. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, something's happening. Something's happening. All right, she has an arm extending. She has another arm that's coming off of the first arm. <laughs> no, keep going, keep going. Okay, you got it. 
Jack is awesome. No, it's not the correct answer. I just keep getting that submitted, and uh, you feel like I just might give you that, but I'm not going to. <laughs> all right, all right, this is getting itch. Okay, we got it. Dan Colley got cut your own hair, so there are, I'm gonna let you have that. I know it's in the same household, but uh, those are two different people, so they now have a 33% chance to get a pizza to their house tonight, so. Hey, if, uh, Mike, if your mom's playing, you should have her jump on and, and try to win another one. Yeah, cutting your own hair was, was correct. Cutting your own hair was correct. All right, here's the next one. Uh, n number five, let's see if you guys can get this one. Again, Pictionary, something you do. Also, this is probably something that we don't enjoy doing. Uh, it's a little weird, maybe a little strange. Something we do during quarantine. Sarah, you got it too, just a little late. Sorry, sorry, Sarah. I know you also would really enjoy pizza. I will trade you a pizza for something baked and delicious, by the way. So you, you tell me, uh, post uh, right now in Facebook, tell me about something that you would bake and I will send a pizza to your house if I could somehow get brownies or something delivered to my house. That is a real thing. All right, okay, something's happening. Okay, another person, another person. All right, the first one came through wearing a mask and that's Lydia. Lydia came through with that. Carly, you were like right after her. Um, I know, just a little delayed. Blame your uh, phone uh, provider, I guess. I almost wrote your name, Carly. All right, Lydia with the win on that one. Congrats to Lydia. Lydia actually hasn't won yet, but she did get a pizza because Bradley sent one to her when he won one week. Man, he's just so nice. All right, last one, last one. Um, let's see what we can do. All right, this is something you do during quarantine. Maybe not something I do, but maybe something you guys do during quarantine. Let's see if you guys can figure this out. Tommy's just trying to text me directly, thinking that that might be faster. It might work, except for I'm not in my texting app, I'm in the Remind app, so that's not gonna help you. All right, stay in the Remind app. We have wearing a mask. Jack is awesome, is still not gonna win a prize, but keep submitting that, Don. It might actually work eventually. Here we go, here we go. This is fun. Another stick figure with hair. I like, you should've just left her up there. Uh, it would've been really fun, all right. Is she cutting her hair? What is she doing? What do we got, what do we got? Uh, Jack is awesome, no. Jack is not awesome. I mean, he is, but that's not the correct answer. He is quite awesome. Are you just asking, are you just suggesting that I have Jack on the live stream next week? Is that what you're suggesting? Maybe I can make that happen. Jack, if you're watching, do you want to come and be our senior guest next week on our live stream? Yes or no? Check yes, check no, let us know. Okay, what are we doing? All right, first one to come through was Zoe with making TikToks. Making TikToks, I told you people would get that one. All right, that is Zoe, Zoe is on the board, and that's it. Thank you guys so much for playing. Uh, here are our winners, Gabe, Micah, Mo. Dan, Lydia, and Zoe, the Collie gang, really trying to get a pizza this week. I don't blame you, it's a great deal. So, um, I think they deliver pizza out to you where you guys live, I'm not even sure. I'm, you'll have to let me know. So, thank you guys so much. Uh, we have a new uh, submission this week, uh, all the way from, uh, from Mason Abalo, known as the Mace of Spades. Check out his card trick. It's the Mesa Spades. I've got a little routine set up for you guys. Don't worry, I haven't made any deals with the devil. But nonetheless, I hope you enjoy. And I know i got to keep this video short. So without further ado, the Mesa Spades presents the Dream of Aces. Let's get started.
watching, guys. Have a fun live stream. Look, we got to a, a place in our service where I'm going to get to talk with Peyton, one of our seniors here at Alive. Um, and I'm so thankful that she could come into the studio today. So thanks for being here. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And she was killing it on that Pictionary. So anybody who wins tonight, you better pay your respects to Peyton for setting you up for a win. Um, really great job. Thank you guys for responding and being a part of this. So um, each week I have an opportunity to interview some of our seniors. So far, Anna and Gabe have been on and Peyton's now in our third week of our Uncertain Series, joining us for our senior feature. So um, once again, thanks. And uh, let me just kind of hear a little bit about um, your story with Alive because you've been, you've been at Alive longer than I have, really. Yeah. So um, when did you first uh, come to Alive or whatever it was called when you actually got here? So I came to Alive in sixth grade, but it wasn't called Alive, it was called Solution. But um, during the summer of going into seventh grade, um, Schmidt came in yeah. and it became Alive. Yeah. And that was yeah. summer camp. So was that your first summer camp? Yes, that was so my first summer. That was um, above the waves, and that was all the way up in the panhandle. That that was a lot of fun. That was yeah. my first summer camp with you guys. So we all we kind of started at the same time with that. Um, but yeah, you said you were here with Dustin Schneider and a part of Solution. Thanks again for um, that. Was a great handoff from West to Dustin to me. Um, and thank you for awesome students that I got to start with, like Peyton. And now Peyton is a senior and finishing. I'm old. I've been doing this a long time, right? And I'm getting, I'm not going to cry. It's fine. Um, so that was when you first came. So what has been, you know, you've been here for, we're talking seven years. You've been in this youth group, six years with me. What has been something that you've just really enjoyed about youth group, about Alive here, uh, yeah, here at the church? Um, so I love like the live community, like how we have like small groups every week and just like how welcoming everyone is. But I'd say like my favorite memory is going to Romania on a missions trip with just serving all those little kids in the villages with all of my friends. So yeah, that was the first Romania trip, right? That we took. Yes. Okay, that was that was really really fun and special. So we stayed. That was not when we stayed at the Clico's house. We stayed over in the other one, right? Yes. Yeah, in the other place. Really fun. Um, I love that trip as well. It was uh, life changing. I mean, first time I ever, I've been to Romania for years. I've known the Clicos, heard about them, yeah. and just always wanted to go and see their ministry. And um, it was awesome to have Peyton there. So I'm thankful we got to be part of the trip. And do you think you might try to, maybe even not with us, maybe go on a trip in the future? you like to go again? Yeah, I would love to go to Romania again or any other mission trip. Sweet. Yeah. That's really awesome. Yeah, and shout out, uh, who, who's your small group leader? Mo? Yes. So shout out to Mo. Hold it down for uh, your junior, senior girls community. You're losing some, some awesome students like Peyton, but you're going to stay with them forever. So um, yeah, uh, a couple more things. So you've mentioned, uh, you know, that, that was awesome. I love that trip. Um, and now... You're about to graduate, but unfortunately, you've kind of been forced into this weird quarantine virtual school. You were like literally about to finish school this week, right? Yeah. You have like. I finished on Friday. You have like two more classes. You're almost done. It's all kind of easy here on out. So yeah. we can. I think you're done, right? We can officially be like you're pretty yes. much done at this point. Well, congratulations. Um, so what have you been outside of virtual school or online schooling? What have you been kind of up to during uh, during quarantine? Um, so I've been doing like a lot of art so me and my mom did art like chalk art in our neighborhood and we left chalk there for like other people to draw on and they drew all over the circle and you were you guys were on the news right as I, I yes you got we were on the news. not you necessarily but they featured your like art walk kind of thing yeah yeah we we're on the news and then last week we did chalk out chalk art at a hospital yeah and they really enjoyed that and then tomorrow we're also doing chalk art with a group that's at so the hospital that's so cool. So taking a group of people, uh, not breaking any quarantine rules, but just going out there to appreciate and value our healthcare workers. Those are kind of really on the front line of keeping us safe right now. And just, it's a simple thing, but but really a beautiful way to just support people. So, well, thank you for your art um, that you're doing. Um, and so you're about to graduate. Um, so Hopefully. Tell, hope, no, you're fine. Everything's gonna be good. All right, and you're graduating from what school? Uh, the first academy. Yeah, and you've been there. It's it's okay. You, you left us here at OCP. No problem. No problem. Uh, so you've been there. This is your third year, right? Yes. And so you're finishing there. Um, and you are committed to go to what school? 
Uh, Liberty University. Go, what did we say, Flames? Is that what yes. Okay, go Flames. Okay, cool. And you're going to be up there, and that's in Virginia, right? Yes. Cool. Lynchburg, Virginia. Are you excited to get out of Florida? Yes, well, kind of. It's going to be really cold. Yeah, like, it's 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 warm in the studio, and you're wearing, like, a sweater in here, so I'm, it's going to be a little different up there. I, I, yeah. Yeah, just a little bit. Cool. And what are you planning to, uh, what are you planning to, to study or major in, if you've even made that decision yet? Um, I haven't made the decision yet, but I'm thinking either digital media or special education. So. That's awesome. Both of those. Very different, but yes. could be awesome either way. Um, and you said also, there was something you were, you were doing, you said at, in high school you were doing lacrosse, which is really cool, and you were involved in theater, I know, and you were involved in art, but you were also involved in uh, the marching band performance as part of the Color Guard team. And I just found out right before this that you said you actually got a, a scholarship to be part of the Color Guard um, at Liberty. Yeah. That's going to be so cool. And you said you have to go in a little early. Yes, I have to go two weeks early for band camp, yeah. uh, where they like train us and like teach us like what we're doing for the show. So. Yeah, band camp, high school, but then it's like this is college band camp. Like yeah. I didn't even get to be in college band camp. That that's so cool. Well, um, I'm excited for that. You'll have to like if if you guys get live videos of your show, you'll have to like post that, and so we can share that and see what you're doing. And when you let us know what what your show theme is going to be, I'd love to know. I look, I'm a marching band geek. I did four years of marching band in high school. Go Wildcats. Um, and I loved it, so I love getting to see her do it at the college level as part of that, that Color Guard. So that's all. If you don't know what Color Guard is, YouTube it. It's awesome and a huge part of the visual element of the, of the marching band performance. So, um, well, hey, I'm so excited for you. Um, and I, I just want to pray for you um, as you uh, kind of take this next step. And I know there's a lot of uncertainty right now. And I know you're not even sure, like, hey, are we going to start on time with college this year? Is band camp going to be normal? Are we going to be able to do that? I know there's a lot of variables, um, but I'm excited for you. And I want to know, want you to know how much we love you and all of our seniors here that are kind of having a weird end to their high school career. But it doesn't matter. You still got big things ahead. So I want to pray for you. Um, Jesus, we thank you so much uh, for today. We thank you so much for Peyton. Um, and just the time that she spent, I think about her time in Romania and all the, the, the many times, I can't even count all the times that she's been uh, plugged in and serving um, and telling, really just sharing the love of Jesus um, just by being present and um, just so friendly and encouraging to people around her. I'm thankful for her heart, um, for her family, and for what you are calling her to do in the future. So Jesus, I pray that you'd be with her uh, specifically in these coming months as there's a lot of uncertainty about graduation, about going to college, about what's next and how that's going to work out. Um, but Jesus, I pray that you give her really specific vision and clarity about uh, declaring that major in the future and that she would have an incredible uh, just time in college at the next level. So we thank you. Uh, be with her, bless her, keep her safe as she would uh, relocate and uh, just help her to have just a ton of really great and fun new experiences. We love you so much and thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, well, thank you, Peyton, so much for being here in studio. Uh, hopefully tomorrow goes awesome. Thank you for yeah. caring about our healthcare workers, and we're looking forward to hearing about all the stuff you're going to be doing in the future. So um, awesome. Well, hey, it, right now we're going to transition over to a time of worship, and actually what we have today is uh, Chrissy Cooper, uh, one of our, our middle school girls leaders our, for our eighth grade girls, uh, and her husband, Corey, who is our executive pastor here at the church, uh, put together a little worship uh, time for us, and I'm so, so thankful for them doing this. So I want to encourage you right now to get yourself in a position, a posture of worship, in a place where you can remove any kind of distraction that's around you and just sit and focus your attention just for the next few minutes on God. Uh, he has given us life. Um, he has made us alive even though we were uh, dead, and he's given us uh, just joy. And so I encourage you to worship God for who he is and to let your heart be centered on him. So thank you guys for watching. Enjoy this time of worship. Hey, live. Come worship with us. We're going to start with the song Oceans.
This next song is Raise a Hallelujah, if you want to get your lyrics ready. It starts with, I raise a hallelujah. Now raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah. Now raise a hallelujah. Louder than the unbelief. Louder than the unbelief. Now raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. Now raise a hallelujah. And heaven comes to fight for me. And I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes, and hope will arise Death is defeated, the King is alive
Lord, we pray for a great alive time tonight, and we just pray that you will help us proclaim these words and live by them in this time of uncertainty and darkness. We want to sing these words louder than ever and um, let the enemy flee because our faith is just so much stronger than that, Lord, and our Lord is so much bigger than all this going on. So we love you so much, Lord, and um, amen. Well, thank you guys so much. Chrissy, Corey, miss having you guys on Wednesday, but I'm so thankful you can make a video of you guys worshiping in your home and share it and so we can enjoy and be blessed by that as well. And what you're singing is so true. Um, we are singing a, louder, uh, singing a little bit louder and lifting up praises because the King is alive, and that is what we celebrate here at Alive, um, and I'm so thankful for that. Let's take a minute before we get into our message and uh, take some time and do our heartbeats. Uh, if you don't know what our heartbeats are, each week at Alive, we take some time to yell out and proclaim the, our mission statements here at Alive. We call them our heartbeats because we're alive and that makes sense, right? And so these are statements, they were written by students, really just about who we are and what our mission is as students. Um, in this world. So um, if you know them, yell them out wherever you're at. At the end, we like to do a big clap above your head. Uh, that's a lot of fun for me alone in the studio. So uh, let's do that right now. One, two, three. I live to love God through worship. We live to love others as he loved us. We live to show the difference. We live to follow his call. We live to see others come alive. This is our heartbeat. Cool. Well, thank you guys so much. Uh, I don't know about you, Connor. I, I think it's been a little bit of time since we've last washed our hands, and that's really important. So why don't you take one minute, take a stretch, and go wash your hands. Enjoy this video. to my daughter Maisie for helping me with that video. Pretty good hand washing technique if you ask me, uh, but she learned from the best. So, um, But hey, thank you guys so much once again for being on. Hey, we're gonna transition to a time where you guys can hear uh, a little bit out of God's word. We've been in a series called Uncertain, and each week I've actually had the pleasure to interview different spiritual leaders, faith leaders around our community and even outside us. I got to talk to my friend Chris Arroyo, youth pastor up in New York on week one. Last week we heard from Gloria Solis working uh, with uh, Fellowship of Christian Athletes here right around our church um, in the Colonial High School, Jackson Middle School area. And this week uh, I have had the opportunity to talk to my friend Mark McKinney, uh, who is a youth pastor in the Winter Park area at Lake Baldwin Church. Um, and I love getting to sit down with him. He is such an encouragement to me and my ministry here at Alive. And I think he has a lot of encouragement for you guys as well. And he has a really cool accent, so that makes it a lot of fun. So why don't you guys enjoy this time as we go into Uncertain Week 3. Well, hey, Mark. Thanks so much for uh, joining us today. 
Yeah, um, yeah. Thanks for inviting me. Glad to be with you, Michael. It's gonna be a laugh. Yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely. So, um, welcome to week three of Uncertain, which is uh, the series that we're in right now with the live. Um, and I've just been having some really cool conversations with with different people about um, walking in times of uncertainty, which right now is a lot of it. Um, and how to find our certainty in Jesus. That's really what this is about. So I want to have a conversation with you today about that, if that's okay. I want to read this verse, this passage out of James chapter one, uh, starting in verse two, which is kind of a theme verse for us during this series. So this is what it says. This is the New Living Translation. Uh, it says this, uh, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you'll be perfect and complete, needing nothing. And uh, that's the goal. Um, tell, me, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself, because I think that's going to kind of transition into um, a little game we're going to play, if you will. So, so introduce yourself, if you would, for Alive. Yeah, well, thanks for... Um just introducing me, Michael. I'm Mark McKinney. I am a youth pastor here in Orlando, Florida. And we're in a church called Lake Baldwin Church, and we meet in Glen Ridge Middle School. And I am not from here. Um, really? I don't know if you can... <laughs> didn't notice at all. There's something. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah I'm from North Carolina. Okay. Um, no, that's not true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm actually, me and my wife, were both from a place called Belfast in Northern Ireland. Uh, we built the Titanic, and that's about the best thing we've done. Better than anything I've ever done. That's that's amazing. Congratulations. Um, and C.S. Lewis was also from Belfast, so that's pretty cool as well. That's why we're friends, actually. Yes. <laughs> I'll just that back. It's amazing. So, um, uh, yeah, I just turned 30 last year, um, and we welcomed into our family as well last year uh, our new little girl, Anna. So she's about 15 months old. She's wild just this crazy little nutcase of a girl we love her that's awesome and uh and let me ask you before we get into a little game what is your uh favorite thing right now about being in quarantine and then your least favorite or whatever order you want to do that in um yeah well so my favorite thing is probably um being more with with my family you know like spending more time with amy and anna yeah and um yeah that's that's going all like soppy there but there's not very much I'm enjoying about quarantine. The thing that I'm enjoying least, <laughs> oh, there's so many. There's so many. The thing, I'm, the thing I'm enjoying least is just um, not being able to eat Chick Fil A with other real people. You know, besides my family. Like, okay, I want to. I want to share a number two sandwich with a bunch That's of spicy, people. Right? Yeah, That's the spicy, two. and um. Yeah, yeah, since you introduced me to the coop, though, I feel like, Ooh, gosh, remember. I don't know where to go anymore. I kind of yeah. feel like a divided man. You can, you can go get that. They still have the pickup, I think. Yeah, oh, they you do? Need to, I think people need to, right now, while they're watching this, need to comment um, what their, what their go-to order is for Chick-fil-A, because I, I want to know. I'm, sure. I'm, probably, I'm probably more of the 12-count nuggets with a lemon. Really? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I respect for the number two and the number one. I mean, respect across the board. But that's right. Yeah, um, I, I've noticed that there's some some words that that come across that I don't have an interpretation for. Um, so yeah. I thought we could just take a real quick second and you could just share some fun words that uh, don't maybe translate as well for uh, us American Americans in our English or whatever you want to say. So um, give it give us a couple of words that just are kind of fun for you. Well, wow, that, that's a good question. When I came here, I had to, like, change how I spoke because uh, my students would look at me like I had, like, two ads. Yeah. And they'd be like, what's this guy talking like? So no, there's yeah, a couple yeah. of things. Um, Kai is definitely one of them. Cow? Ka no, Kai. <laughs> okay. You know, like the, the animal with milk? Okay, you yeah, know, yeah, That yeah. one. So we got Kai. Um, if I want to get clean, I would go and have a shower. Okay. <laughs> try say, you I want a you shower. To say, no, okay. no, try, no, no. I want you to say that, Michael. Try just say that. Char. Char. That's okay. That, that's that okay. felt like a, I sound like a pirate. Like a <laughs> char. <laughs> okay. No. Keep keep going. Keep going. Um. You know, we got Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's we got good. the Holy Spirit, and I think. I know. No, I've got more weird ones. If you like, want to look at your reflection, you might look in the mirror. 
<laughs> down in the 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 mire, the the, the mur. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Well, well, how do you say that? How do you say that? Mirror. 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 <laughs> mirror. <laughs> yeah. Mar. It's, def- it's definitely a mur. Um. <laughs> <laughs> this is great um we got some those you know those birds like that can turn their heads like right the way around yeah. without without like breaking their necks sure. um we would call that an owl what would what would you call us an owl yeah, that, yeah it's, 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 it's just like a wider mouth thing i think just like an owl. owl i don't i don't know what it is <laughs> i think we're really lazy the way we speak so i really yeah. had to slow down how i speak so if i you know, I would normally speak at about a pace that's like way faster than this. And then um, when I came here, I had to stop saying like an aisle takes a shower in a mirror. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. Which is a weird thing to do if you're an aisle. Oh, man. So funny. All right. Well, I'm going to throw on a different Zoom background. Um, <laughs> I was thinking, I was looking at the scenic. This is what I was rocking earlier. Um, I really I love do that like- uh, this uh, Ron Swanson Parks and Rec desk, yes. and of course yes. the the office interview. Yeah. I, I I think I'm going back to, to scenic. I, I like this today. I'm feeling yeah, you look, I feel like a Bob Ross painting, and this is what why I love it. Yeah, you're looking good out there. Thank you. Um, all right. Well, let me. I just want to pray for us, and uh, sure. yeah, let's do it. So Jesus, I thank you for this time. I thank you for for Mark. I thank you for the way that you've uh, used him in, in my life to encourage me, and I pray that uh, his story. Um, would be an encouragement to students today and that you would um, bring us all to a place of certainty in Christ. We love you so much. Christ, let me pray. Amen. Um, Amen. Well, real brief, I, I, I mean, I wanted to share, I, I got to meet you um, working at a, um, I, I actually went to the FCA meeting at Glenridge Middle School um, and was there, got to meet you. I didn't even know there was going to be another youth guy there. I thought I was on my own. I also thought it was going to be a small thing like, you know, 10, 15 kids in like a, you know, just a room and we we're just going to talk about Jesus, but it was huge. There was tons of kids in the bleachers yeah. in the gym. It was awesome. Got right. to meet you. And then I've just enjoyed just connecting with you, hearing about ministry, being encouraged. Um, and it's just been awesome. So, so tell me a little bit about your, uh, your faith. Um, what did that look like for you growing up and, and maybe this shortly, how did you kind of get into ministry? Yeah. Well, um, again, thank you for just kind of align me and to share part of my story i was brought up in a christian family um it was a traditional family and we did the whole church thing every sunday that was a non-negotiable in our in our family and um i remember actually making some kind of commitment to jesus when i was eight years old one night uh, we had this kids club that we'd been going along to um in our church and i loved it and they presented just the person of Jesus and his love for me in such a way that, that I had no other choice, but to, to in that moment become a Christian. I didn't really understand what that meant for me or really what that life ought, ought to have looked like. And I remember when I was uh, a young teen, you know, middle schools really wrestling with a lot of things to do with my faith. And I just got to a point where I, I just wanted to leave the church. I, I wasn't happy with, with just my life. I struggled a lot with depression. Um, I had some kind of very dark seasons, actually, in, in my early teen lives where I had a lot of just self-contempt. And um, I really didn't know what to do with that. I didn't know where to bring it or who to talk to about that. And certainly God didn't seem close. And so I saw this this kind of church thing that I just – had just lost interest in and I remember one night I remember coming to God and saying God I'm I'm just done with this either I want to follow you like like you invite me to in the Bible or I just want to walk away from the church I want to walk away from faith but I want to do something I'm sick of doing nothing I'm sick of living like this so if you're real and if you're out there would would you come and would you do something in in my life and and God did and when I was a young teen, we, we had these events that we'd been going to. My friend invited me to big youth events, sure. attracted loads of like middle schoolers in the city. And I remember that night, just as the worship band came back up, they'd been talking out of a passage, Romans 8, yeah. or just communicating the love of God for me. And then just God spoke to me in a new way that I'd really not experienced before. Yeah. Um, 
in that moment as as a band were playing through some kind of one of those old 90s 2000s worship songs oh, yeah. um <laughs> it was with a jam yeah um, absolutely. i i just remember just being brought to tears and saying god i want i want this life that that is mine in jesus i want to follow jesus i want to surrender everything and yes and i want to belong to you and so i made that recommitment whatever you want to call it to to jesus when i was about 14 years old and i never looked back um that's awesome so i uh how i became a youth pastor is a funny story i never thought i'd be doing what i'm doing right now in the same boat yeah absolutely yeah <laughs> i didn't go looking for it i didn't ask for yeah. it um i remember i went to university so that was in belfast i grew up in belfast all my life and then for university i ended up going to liverpool in england you know famous for the beatles sure heard of them before i think yeah yeah <laughs> liverpool football club um oh Eddie soccer fans. got it got it got it yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no we're like well <laughs> sorry i didn't mean to be disrespectful <laughs> okay no keep going um and so um just great time i did a music degree over there had a great time playing drum kit and piano out there and then i was finishing up that degree and i went to my youth pastor who had kind of been working at the church i'd been attending to while i was at university and i said hey i just don't know what to do with my life like I know two things. I love like teenagers. Like there's something about me just loves yeah. like working with these guys. But, um, and I love Jesus, but I don't know what to do with that. I don't, man, I know. wish kids would come to me with that. Like, right. man, I just, I want a group of college kids that just come to me. Like, I love Jesus and teenagers. Got any ideas? Yes. <laughs> That's like a youth pastor's yes. dream. I you can have my history. job. Yes, yeah. please come take my job. I am. Um, and he said, well, have you, like, ever thought about, like, youth ministry? And I thought, no. no. <laughs> Why would I not? think Why would doing I that? do that? <laughs> and um, again, we had a conversation in a couple of weeks. And he said, hey, like, you know, have you thought about this? And I was like, well, yeah, I just don't really think it's a good fit for me. I don't really have the gifts. I don't like being in front of people. Yeah. And I don't think I'm good enough. Money, like, it's yeah. a horrible, <laughs> horrible idea. Yeah. Who, who does this kind yeah. of thing? And um, he was like, well, hey, if you've got no other options, why don't you just come and intern here for a year with us? And if you love it, then great. And if you don't, you've done a year and had a lot of great experience. So I did it um, at the end of my course at university. And um, I loved it. Felt within three weeks that God just had put his finger uh, on, on my heart and just said, this is what I want you to give yeah. your life to. Yeah, so that's what I've been and, doing and, and eventually that brought you here. And I, right. I think you were you're kind of sharing that this was a, a really strange time for you, a, a time of great uncertainty. Um, so uh, share a little bit about getting from Liverpool. Um, you were Belfast, you got down to Liverpool, figuring out youth ministry, felt called to that, and now having to leave, leave, leave Liverpool and come all the way to the yeah. U.S. and figure out what that's going to look like. So yeah i mean for us that was a huge step of faith in in our life we were married at this stage and working as a youth pastor in this big church in liverpool great church like just so many awesome things happening in that place and um, that god was up to we were running camps kids were coming to faith we saw kids just chase after jesus but something within us you know, deep in our hearts, we sensed that God was moving us on. And we didn't know where that was. We we actually assumed it was back to Ireland. So I looked at yeah. loads of jobs and looked at loads of churches back in Ireland. And um, none of those actually worked out. And there was a lot of confusion. Um, then this came our way through an unbelievable set of circumstances that a, youth, that a pastor here in Orlando, Florida, in Lake Baldwin contacted us and said, hey, I wonder if you'd consider being part of the process um you know to interview potentially as working as our our youth pastor yeah so we like huge leap. yeah yeah like hugely we immediately were excited by it but at the same time felt like i don't know god this just seems too crazy it's just not what we had in mind and so we prayed about it and god kept seemed to open the door so we interviewed loads of like zoom calls like this with their team and they finally offered us offered me the job and offered us the opportunity to, to come out and be a part of this church and did not see that coming we prayed about it and i remember amy and i my wife 
just sitting down and going, God, you gotta, you gotta shut this down if it's not of you. Like, yeah. I'm not even smart enough to figure out what the best decision is, but we had a lot of friends. We had a house, we had a great church, a great youth ministry back in Liverpool. And, and in one sense, it didn't make, it didn't make any sense for us to leave that, to come here yeah. to, you know, something that was, was not any of that. We didn't have any friends over here yeah. and the church was completely different. And that was, that was a big step of faith. And we finally committed to that. And we said, Lord, we want to say yes to whatever you've got yeah. in our life. So we took that huge step of faith. And so what it takes for us to come do that is we've got to get a visa. And that's, that's where it started to become slightly crazy. Yeah. Yeah. What, well, if I could ask, how, how did you just, how did you know certainly that this is actually what, like, what, what kind of sense did you have that this was what God was calling you to do, to leave, to uproot where you were at and come, come to the U S yeah. Well, certainly like, I think there's definitely three things and, and one of them was just prayerfulness. Like we were, we were just praying hard that God would close the door if it wasn't what he wanted us to do. Yeah. Um, and to open the doors if it was, and we just kept seeing in front of us doors open um, in ways that we didn't actually expect in miraculous ways. Yeah. Um, and I think secondly as well, we, we kind of went to really wise people around us in our, in our church. And we said, Hey, we feel like God might be calling us to this. Can you, can you help not only pray with us through this, but can you help just speak into this and help us figure out, is this really a call of God or is this just us getting a wild idea after some late night yeah. pizza? Um, <laughs> and, um, yeah. Or yeah. And, um, and, I, and I think the third thing for us was really the internal call. And that's, do we really feel like God by the power of this Holy spirit is calling us to leave our place in Liverpool and, and go somewhere new Orlando, Florida. Sure. And then um, we really did sense that with sometimes words that we couldn't express. We, we that's knew at one stage, the spirit of God was saying, I've got something else beyond this and I'm going to move you on soon. And we, yeah. It sounds really mysterious, but that's the best we could do. And that's why I think like prayerfulness and finding really wise, godly people around us to help figure out, yeah, was this of God or was this just kind of something that wasn't? And after all of that, we just sensed that God was saying, hey, it's time to take a step of faith. And, that's and, ultim and ultimately, like, you've got to do that, don't you? Yeah. Ultimately, like, God's not asking us to live in our heads, but to take steps of faith like following jesus is really about walking in faith and it's not by sight and it's not by feeling or nice ideas yeah by faith um so right now um a lot of uncertainty going on and i, I know you're not uh unfamiliar with that because you are working with students we're both trying to figure out uh what does youth ministry look like when we can't be relational directly with <laughs> students and um what what are you telling your students right now how have you been encouraging them with this time of uncertainty where they don't know what's next well hey can i just share a story that might that might help just set yes. that up a little bit yeah yeah absolutely so um one of the things when we were moving out here to america is you got to get a visa yeah and um we applied for that visa and um you know we left our jobs in liverpool and so I remember like three months after we'd applied for our visa, we were kind of hoping to hear like, yes, it's been like accepted and we can get in a flight and go out to Orlando. Um, but three months came and at that three month mark, we got an email saying that our visa had been declined, rejected, wow. and that we would have to try again. But we left our jobs and um, we got another rejection. Then we got another rejection and we had to move back to Northern Ireland. We had no work. Um, we kind of packed up our house, got on a ferry and um, a boat. <laughs> yeah, 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 I can't. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know what that is. <laughs> and um, we went back to Northern Ireland and, and we lived with our family. Um, Christmas time came, our visa was rejected. Easter came, our visa was rejected. And I, I tell you that because all through that time, and I know it's different from where we are right now in some senses, but we were living with this colossal sense of uncertainty. Yeah. Like, and honestly, like I was, I wasn't sleeping. I was like struggling with a lot of anxiety. 
and depression kind of came my way again because what I, I thought like I've got this whole thing wrong. Like we've taken the yeah. step of faith, but you just ruined God. everything. Yeah. 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 yeah absolutely. God's it's not terrifying. with us. Yeah. God's not for us. God's left us. We feel on our own. We don't know what our future holds. We even had some people saying, Hey, well, what are you going to do now that this hasn't worked out? And that was like, and they were well-meaning people, but you know, that was, that was really crushing for us. And sure. all throughout that season, we had this enormous uncertainty and I remember one verse from that, um, and it's from the book of Isaiah. Um, <laughs> you know that verse? Yes. No, actually, I haven't. Isaiah, yes. yes. I, that, that must be a funny book. Why, would, why else would we be laughing? Yes, I um, guess so. Very, well, so <laughs> the book of humor, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So the book of Isaiah, yeah, I say everything funny. And um, there was this verse that said, when you, when you go through the waters... I will be with you when you walk through the waters, they shall not overwhelm you. And when she, you go through the fire, it shall not consume you. I, the Lord, I'm, I'm with you. And I, yeah. honestly, like in uncertainty, what I want my students to know more than anything is, is that they're not going through what they're going through alone. And they might feel like it because all of us are trying to figure out this thing on our own. But there's this colossal sense in which we're not alone. Because not only do I want my students to know that, hey, I love them, I care for them, and I really am interested in what they're going through in their life, but there's a God who created them and who, who loves them, who goes through them when every uncertainty of their life. And so I would always say, you know, my, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what you go through when you know the one who goes through it with you. Yeah. And so I want our students to know that we care for them. We love them. We're trying to encourage them as best we can to just keep going, keep their head up, get up at a reasonable time and start, yes, their, <laughs> right? yes, and so start their homework. Yes. Um, but, but more than that and above everything, we want them to know that this probably points them upwards to see the God who is with them, who's for them, who's not abandoned them, who's not forgotten them and, and, in whatever uncertainty they find themselves, they find themselves certain of one thing, God's with them. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Well, I, I appreciate that so much. I, I, I think you just, you nailed it. And uh, I don't think there's anything more I need to ask you. I do want to <laughs> read, uh, I do want to read this, this passage out of James uh, one more time, just kind of conclude us. Uh, but thank you for that word. And that, that's sure. awesome coming from the prophet. How did you say it again? <laughs> okay, Isaiah. Isaiah. Okay. Yeah. I'm not even going to attempt that. Um, so here it is out of James chapter one, uh, two through four. And it says this, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete needing nothing. So Thank you for that compelling story and that encouragement for our students uh, alive. Uh, I hope that you would uh, heed this wisdom all the way from Northern Ireland uh, that has <laughs> rooted itself here with us in, our, in the Orlando community. Um, just encouragement that God is walking with you, uh, with us in times of uncertainty. It's a little crazy right now, and we don't really know what's next. We have an idea, um, but things change day in and day out. And so I want to encourage you guys. Um, that God is, is walking with you um, and that he will continue to guide you through uh, the waters of this time. So they will not overwhelm you. That is so encouraging. Um, so Mark, thank you so much. Um, looking forward to getting together soon as well um, and sharing more encouragement. Uh, keep us updated and uh, if there's anything we can do for you and maybe we'll get together soon with some youth groups and do some, uh, do some events or like that. That'd be fun. Guys, thank you so much. And thanks to Mark for having some time to have that conversation with me. I hope that you were encouraged by that, that even as we walk through the waters, he is there guiding us, leading us. And right now, it might feel a little bit like you're walking through some waters. Uh, earlier, Chrissy uh, sang Oceans for us, which is a call that um, even when we uh, go out onto the waters, he will guide us and lead us in the next steps. And so that's what we're doing right now. We're in a time where we are just trusting God with what's next. We might not know exactly what he's doing, but he is a good God and a good father, and he has not left us or abandoned us the same way he led his people through uh, the Red Sea in the book of Exodus. He will lead us through 
this ocean or this sea or these waters that we face, uh, he's faithful to do that. And I want you to be encouraged by that today. Wherever you're at, whatever is going on in your situation, um, I want you to be encouraged. Well, here's a couple things just as we close. We got a little bit left. Uh, in just a minute, we're going to hear a quick ending benediction from one of our students. And of course, we're going to find out our game winners. But here's what you need to know coming up. First of all, please, right now, if you're on Facebook, take just a second and share this to your feed. Um, I know you're like, well, that's embarrassing. I don't want it. Well, I hope that it wouldn't be. I hope that you would want to share this and let people know about Alive, let people know about our service that we have each week. And hopefully someone would be encouraged about the goodness of Jesus and God's great love for us. So go ahead and share that right now. Also, make sure to check it out later. We are on YouTube and we want you to subscribe to our YouTube. Uh, I've heard that if we can get up to 100 subscribers, we can personalize our our um, our web address there with YouTube and that would be awesome for us. So subscribe, watch our videos there. We post some of our individual videos as well and that's a great way to stay connected with what we're doing right now during this virtual uh, season we are in. So I encourage you to check that out. Subscribe to us on YouTube at Alive Orlando there. Um, and make sure that you are joining us 10 a.m. for our Bible studies each day of the week. Our, our weekdays. So Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. We are having a Bible study. Right now we're in the book of Exodus. We're starting in chapter, we're going to be in chapter 7 tomorrow. So I hope that you would join us. There is a link that goes out to that remind text every morning. Uh, and it's the same link every day. So even if you can't find it, just go to that old link, whatever you had, it will be that link each and every day. So thank you guys. Stay connected. Let us know if there's anything we can do for you uh, in this kind of weird season that we find ourselves in. Love you so much. Check out this benediction from our very own Xavier Pipes. What's up Alive? Um, I'm Xavier and Schmidt asked me to read a passage for today's live stream. I chose verse... Uh, sorry, I chose Matthew 7, verse 7. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. I chose this passage because it is telling us that God will give us what we ask for, but he may not do it right away. It will take time. Xavier, thanks so much for doing that for us. Uh, and actually, I just realized, Xavier, you won the game last week. The pizza came to your house, and I heard that your very own small group leader, Connor Willie, brought that to you. So, man, I don't think it gets any better than that. So, hey, we're going to find out as we close out our service who our game winner is going to be, our pizza, who's it going to. Again, we talked about Micah and Dan. You guys both won uh, earlier in our game. That's uh, a 33% chance that the Collies are getting a pizza tonight. So let's see who this lands on. Uh, Gabe would be a two-time winner. I know Mo's been trying to get it. has been on the board almost every week. Zoe's already won once, and, and Lydia's hoping for a pizza. So we're going to roll the dice, go try to keep it on the table. I never am able to do it every week. So let's find out who our pizza winner is going to be. Hold it up. I feel like I need to have Connor do this every week instead of me. All right, here we go. Here we go. It's five, it's Lydia. Lydia, you are getting a pizza. Congratulations, thanks for playing so much. If you don't want the pizza because you already got one, you can tell me to send it to somebody else, that's cool. Or if you're looking forward to the pizza, you can do that. All right, thank you guys so much for being on our show, uh, watching us on our a live stream each week. Join us next week, same time, 4 p.m. here on Facebook. Uh, for an amazing service and check us out later on YouTube. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you soon.